Hello, military and aerospace enthusiasts. Welcome to our channel, Deep Dive Defense. Over here we take a deep look from unusual angles, which may challenge your mind. So let's dive right in. Today's topic is the Resvan Medium Range Liquid Propellant Ballistic Missile. It deserves the classification as a distinct ballistic missile, even if it can be described as a variant of the Kiam missile which ultimately traces its lineage to the Soviet R-17 Scud missile. Born out of desperate necessity, the Resvan evolved into a highly advanced and effective missile, eventually adopted by the IRGC Aerospace Force. During the Yemen-Saudi Arabian conflict, Iran assisted Yemen's Ansarallah in modifying their stockpiles of North Democratic People's Republic of Korea, Hwasong-6, best known as Scud C ballistic missiles. The modifications had the goal to achieve a longer range, via the technologies developed for Iran's Chiam missile family. Further efforts led to the Burkhan III configuration, later renamed Zulfagar by the Yemenis. Remarkably, this extensive optimization transformed the basic short-range R-17 Scud design, with its 300-kilometer range, into a medium-range ballistic missile capable of reaching 1,350 kilometers, a more than fourfold increase that granted the Yemenis regional reach and the deterrence to target Saudi Arabia's oil refineries in their northeastern region. Such high strike and deterrence capabilities contributed significantly to the eventual ceasefire in the conflict. When Iran started production of the R-17 Scud designs in the early 90s and began producing the Democratic People's Republic of Korea modification of it, like the Scud C variant by the mid-90s, it took time until the late 2000s to indigenously develop the Chiam modification. This heavily improved missile achieved a range of 750 kilometers, more than twice that of the original design. This was further enhanced in the mid-2010s with the Chiam 2, boasting a 1,000 kilometer range, representing a more than threefold increase over the basic R-17. However, surpassing even that range increase while maintaining tactical value and low production costs, required key technological breakthroughs. The Chiam 2's 1000 km range marked the limit for an optimized missile structure that could still carry the additional weight of a maneuverable re-entry vehicle, MARV, crucial for precision strikes with a circular probability of error, CEP, that makes tactical sense. At 1350 km, however, the Chiam design would need to reduce its payload so significantly that integrating a MARV would become impractical. Iran then took an unusual step by removing the Marvi and reverting to an unguided separable re-entry vehicle. Conventional wisdom suggests that this would reduce the missile's tactical precision, transforming it into either a counter-value terror weapon with an imprecise unitary warhead, or a weapon suitable only for use against large area targets by sub-munition payloads. To maintain the Resvan as a precision-guided weapon capable of effectively destroying targets with a unitary warhead and a CEP of 50 meters or less, Iran devised a very high ballistic coefficient re-entry vehicle. This design solution minimizes drag forces during re-entry, allowing the warhead to maintain high speed and follow a direct ballistic descent trajectory towards its target. Without significant deceleration, it results in high terminal speed. Missiles in this range class typically have a steep re-entry angle of about 40 degrees, and combined with high speed, the short atmospheric passage minimizes the influence of wind and other uncertainties. The Resvan's high ballistic coefficient, estimated above 2,000 and possibly around 2,500 pounds per square foot, surpasses that of many advanced nuclear intercontinental ballistic missile ICBM re-entry vehicles. The higher speed of ICBM re-entry vehicles makes higher ballistic coefficient more difficult to achieve than the with a MRBM like the Resvan. This high value was achieved with a small diameter nose tip made of 3D carbon-carbon composites, capable of surviving the demanding high-velocity journey from outer space to impact. Additionally, ensuring the unguided re-entry vehicle hits point targets required overcoming key technological challenges related to velocity trim. Accurate burnout velocity is crucial for hitting targets on an unguided ballistic trajectory. Techniques to achieve this include throttling down the main engine to a minimum thrust level before shutdown and using gas thruster to correct the re-entry vehicle's speed. Previous Iranian missiles employed a combination of highly precise shutdown timing of the main engine, decelerating retro rockets, and simultaneous re-entry vehicle separation. 
Another technique for velocity trim previously mastered by Iran is one known as Generalized Energy Management Steering Gems, developed for the US Trident 1 submarine launched ballistic missile. Gems alters the trajectory continuously towards the intended target until there is no thrust left. However, it remains unclear if the method used by the Resvan provides the necessary precision for the Resvan's unguided re-entry vehicle to achieve point strike accuracy. The final requirement for point strike accuracy is an inertial measurement unit of high grade, and it's likely that Resvan employs Iran's new generation fiber optical gyroscopes. The high ballistic coefficient re-entry vehicle is believed to retain a speed of Mach 8 at impact, often exceeding the maximum interceptable velocity of many atmospheric ballistic missile defense systems. Re-entry motion fluctuations caused by vibrations, wind, and other effects challenge the reaction speed of hit-to-kill interceptors steering, potentially overwhelming it. The operational use of the Resvan against Saudi Arabia provides confirmation, as evidenced by the observation of nearly 10 Patriot PX-3 missiles launched in ripple mode against one or two Resvan. Such a tactic is typically employed when missiles work in launch on remote mode, for targeting very fast-moving objects. To increase the likelihood of interception, multiple interceptors are deployed into the airspace where the re-entry vehicle, with its transient fluctuating trajectory, might pass by. However, the Saudis, not facing a saturation attack, likely launched a large number of missile interceptors to ensure interception at any cost. This occurred during a phase of the conflict that was not characterized by high intensity. Ultimately, the Resvan's attributes of compactness, low cost, precision strike capability, and effectiveness against ballistic missile defenses made it an attractive system for Iran's aerospace force to adopt into its own service. The existing infrastructure for Shahab-1, Shahab-2, Qiyam, and Qiyam-2 missiles, all using similar interfaces, further facilitated its adaption. Liquid propellant missiles like the Resvan can be safely stored in underground bases for extended periods with minimal maintenance, creating very attractive life cycle costs. In summary, the Resvan extends the range of Scud-based ballistic missiles to 1,350 kilometers, enabling Iran to threaten adversary assets throughout the region. This range effectively suppresses enemy air power by enabling the targeting of their home bases, crucial given Iran's adversaries' strengths in conventional air power. In response to the war on Gaza, modified Zulfagar, Resvan, missiles were used against southern Israel, reducing warhead weight to increase range from 1,350 to 1,650 kilometers. However, this reduction significantly decreased the ballistic coefficient, slowing re-entry speed to around Mach 2, making interception by systems like Aero 3 almost certain, and Aero 2 highly likely. Resvan's natural vulnerability is its risk of being intercepted by exo-atmospheric interceptors. Given its low payload capability, its only counter to that are inflatable decoys and chaff. In 2023, a further development of the Resvan was observed with Yemen's Ansarala, showcasing the Akil medium-range ballistic missile. The Aerospace Self-Sufficiency Jihad organization developed a new MAR for the Resvan, incorporating technology from the Zohair and Kbar Shekhan aeroballistic missiles. This MARV introduces a secondary range extension through a glide phase, employing upper atmospheric skip trajectory maneuvers. This sinusoidal trajectory pattern continues until minimum threshold velocity is reached, after which it transitions to a steep dive towards the target. This technique potentially increases the Resvan's range to 1,650 kilometers, without compromising missile defense penetration capability, and actually improving it against exo-atmospheric interceptors like Aero 3 due to the prolonged glide phase. However, the Akil modification of the Resvan, with its extended range, incurs higher costs due to the need for a G-hardened high-grade guidance system that operates throughout the flight. Longer guidance duration leads to gyroscope and accelerometer drift, necessitating higher-grade guidance systems. In summary, the Resvan represents a low-cost modification of the baseline SCUD, quadrupling its range and enabling a precision that's near point-strike capability. Its evolution Akil, currently in service with the Yemeni Ansarala, further extends the SCUD design's range more than fivefold, showcasing a remarkable case of incremental optimization. So that's all for today. If you enjoyed this video and like our work, please consider liking, 
commenting, and subscribing. We will try our best to answer your comments. Your support would be greatly appreciated and motivates to produce more content in the future. Thank you, and have a great day.